So hello everyone. Uh, our names are Vanya Popovich and Luis Boyd, and we're PhD students at the Advanced Forming Research Center in Glasgow. Uh, we're presenting our work on re robotic hand-eye coordination by learning a retina visual network and deep reinforcement controller with the University of Strathclyde and the SIVAS group at the University of Glasgow. Hand-to-eye coordination is the fundamental skill of combining visual processing with motor control. Recent successes in deep learning have motivated an interest in efficient hand-to-eye coordination robotic systems. However, training deep reinforcement agents using image data is hardware intensive and the input size is usually downscaled or cropped. To tackle this problem, we have created an environment composed of a Baxter research robot, a table and an object. The aim was for the agent, the Baxter robot, to center its end effector directly above the object. We propose using a software retina modeled after mammalian vision to sample full size images taken by the camera to reduce the visual data and also benefit from a degree of scale and rotation invariance. Deep convolutional networks are trained to predict the offset of the object from the fovea, which was fixed on the center of the image. The actuator, uh, then actuator agents are trained using the DDPG algorithm by, proposed by Lily Krupp et al. Uh, we trained two agents, one using the offset prediction by the visual network, and the other one using encoded cortical feature uh, vector extracted from the visual network. The environment is first modeled in simulation and then recreated in real life. The video demonstrates the performance of the offset agent uh, in different scenarios. The first clip shows how the offset agent uh, performs when presented with the object it was trained on. The second and third clip show the agent's capabilities when presented with other previously unseen objects during training. The shapes and colors of the objects were altered. Sorry. Next, we can see that the agent has developed the ability to track objects. However, that is bottlenecked by the performance of the visual network. The last clip shows the behavior when presented with two objects. The actuator network is unsure how to proceed and which one to prioritize. Our main contrib contributions can be described as we have produced the first system to our knowledge that employs the use of a software retina for data reduction in embrace reinforcement robotic manipulation task. We have demonstrated that actuation in the Euclidean space can be learned efficiently using image features extracted in the cortical space. Uh, we have demonstrated that the visual systems which are general can aid the generalizability of the learned actuation policy to new environments. Now I'm going to pass the presentation to my uh, colleague, Luis, who's going to talk about the software retina. Hi, uh, my name's Luis, and the software retina is a visual pre-processing model that's inspired by the Malian vision system that's being developed at the, Glasgow, uh, sorry, the University of Glasgow. Um, so the retina is a layer of different photoreceptor cells at the back of the eye, which turns light into neural impulses before sending them to the brain. These cells are most densely packed in the fovea VI and become increasingly sparse towards the periphery. Ganglion cells are connected to multiple photoreceptor cells to combine their responses into a single value to cull information before sending it to the brain. As can be seen on the tessellation to the right, ganglion cells follow a similar structure to photoreceptor cells being densely packed to the fovea and sparsely towards the periphery. The area over which a ganglion cell is connected to photoreceptor cells is the receptive field, and this value also increases with the distance from the fovea. On the right of the small tessellation, you can see that the Gaussian fields overlaid on top of the tessellation. Sampling an image with this tessellation returns a vector of light intensities, which can be back projected to get a retinal image as seen below. Note how that there is sharpness around the eye, and as you get further away from the fovea, it becomes increasingly blurry. Um, so another important part is the retinal cortical transform. 
So the retina cortical transform takes the signal from each retina, the vector of light intensities, and splits it into two hemispheres and projects each half separately into a form somewhat akin to a log polar mapping. Below you can see an example of the retina's field of view. Next to it is a corresponding cortical image, that's with the fovea kept in the center. Um, and then you can see some more example cortical images of different objects. So in addition to projecting the image vector from being 1D into a suitable form for processing by a deep convolutional neural network, it also potentially confers another, a number of other advantages. So the first one is cortical magnification. Due to the dense sampling of the fovea, this area appears much larger in the cortical image. Uh, this enables humans to accomplish fine motor control tasks like threading a needle, uh, while also maintaining their full field of view. The second thing I want to highlight is attentional spotlight. So by directing a fovea, we can extract high frequency task relevant data and suppress data around the periphery, which is unimportant to the task at hand. And the third uh, is that it potentially affords deep convolutional neural networks a scale more degree, a, a degree, a degree more scale and rotation invariance. As these now appear as translations along the horizontal and vertical axis in the cortical space. Uh, an important part I should mention is that uh, the software retina from sampling with the tessellation to generation of the cortical image is all implemented with CUDA on the GPU so it can run in real time. So the retina visual network, the goal of this module is to enable the efficient processing of full-size images to get this lower dimensional task relevant state prior to learning actuation. So we collected, a, we collected full resolution images from the Baxter Robots and RISC camera. And you can see the examples over here, this is taken in simulation. And then we use traditional color thresholding and image moment calculations to find the object centroid in the Euclidean space. We used a small five layer ResNet with a single fully connected layer to train it to regress the horizontal and vertical distance between the fovea and the object centroid using a data set of cortical images. That's all with the fovea kept fixed at the center of the image. Um, you can also see a visualization of a successful predicted offset. So the goal of the actuation network is to use this extracted visual state in addition to the current end effector position to predict the horizontal and vertical offsets for the end effector, which would result in it being centered, the object being centered directly in the fovea. This could be seen as a precursor step of first directing a fovea to the object of interest to gain the benefits of cortical magnification and attentional spotlight before carrying out more complex manipulation tasks. We chose deep deterministic policy gradient and we used a dense reward function based on the distance of the end vector to the object to train two different agents. One using the small Euclidean state vector, so that's the cortical offset, uh, the offset from the fovea to the centroid. Um, and we trained a second agent which used the uh, cortical features, that is the uh, result of the global averaging layer without the fully connected layer. And just uh, on the left is the training results for the retina visual network and to the right you can see the actuation network's performances. The visual network was trained with a data set of 100,000 cortical images taken from a simulation and then we labeled it with the object offset as described before. It learned quickly and achieved a final performance with near pixel per per perfect accuracy. On the right, the reinforcement learning performance of the two different actuation networks can be seen. Although there are some small fluctuations, both agents achieve very similar performance and learned, very, and learned very quickly. In practice, both agents centered with high accuracy, taking on average only three actions. I'll now hand back over to Vanya, who will describe how the sim to real world transfer worked. Uh, an additional feature we wanted to demonstrate is the simulation to real world transfer. The environment was set up to resemble the simulation environment as closely as possible to facilitate the transfer. <coughs> Sorry. Slight modification had to be made to accustom for the differences, such as the color thresholding algorithm, to account for the imperfect and noisy images from the two uh, environments and the initial joint positions 
to account for the dif differences of the real Baxter and the simulated one. For the visual network, weights learned in simulation were fine-tuned with an additional data set of images collected from the real world, which was only a fraction of the one used in the simulation. Then the actuation networks were run for half the simulation time steps to accustom to the new environment. Next, we're going to talk about the real world performance. The first figure shows the fine tuning of the 64 cortical feature variant of the visual network. There are some fluctuations during fine tuning that can be attributed to the drastic change of the environments. However, the network uh, stabilizes quickly after the 20th epoch. The second graph evaluates the reward gained by the two actuator agents after fine tuned in the real world environment. We can observe that the two networks require more time to stabilize than the simulation. The blue line corresponds to the agent trained on the predicted offset, while the orange one uh, is the agent trained on the 64 dimensional cortical vector encoded by the retina visual network. There are some big fluctuations in the training of the offset network because of the manual repositioning of the cube. In simulation, the object is randomly spawned at each time step, but in the real world, we have to relocate the object every 5,000 time steps. The offset network optimized worse than the features network in the real world, which is the opposite of what we observe in simulation. However, the offset network developed unique traits in the real world, such as generalizing to center above objects, different to what it was trained on in terms of size, shape, and color. Our conclusions can be summarized that as decomposing hunt to eye control systems into retina visual networks and actuation networks can improve. First, the efficiency of processing full size images, the sample complexity of, the, of deep reinforcement learning and the generalizability of the system. 